I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again. He will lift up Jesus Delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye. And at this time, we're looking at verses 14 and 15. Jesus Christ was speaking to all the people before him, and seeing the multitudes, he went he up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and touched them, saying, what was Jesus Christ thinking about at the time he gave these words? Who did he see? What did he see? Yes, we know he saw the crowd before him. He saw the people before him. And he saw the disciples before him. But you remember, when he was praying for the sanctification of his own disciples, he said, neither do I pray for these alone, but for those who will believe on, their, on me through their word. We understand then that when Jesus ministered, he was not just ministering on the immediate crowd, he was ministering also to the people that will believe after them. When he saw the multitude, yes, he saw the multitude there that day. And he saw the multitude after them. The people that will still come and come and come and listen to the word. And his disciples came unto him. He saw the disciples at that time that came unto him. But he knew until he's coming again. Disciples, disciples will keep on coming unto him. And as he opened his mouth, he taught them and is teaching us. I want you to understand what then when Jesus spoke, when Jesus taught, when Jesus ministered, he ministered with the understanding, not these alone, but many others that were here. Whenever you minister, you think about that. Here is a teacher in front of you, I mean a school teacher. He hears the word. You minister with the understanding. I am giving him his portion. I'm giving him the portion he will go and give to his students. Here are mothers before you. Yes, we're giving them their portion here. And we're giving them the portion they will go and give to their children. Here are managers. Here are directors. Here are leaders of corporations. Yes, we're preaching to them. This multitude. But we're also giving them the portion when they go back home, that they will give to the people waiting at home. And seeing the multitudes, seeing the immediate, initial multitudes, and then seeing the coming, future multitudes, he went up into a mountain. Why did he go up to a mountain? I've told you already. If he were in the valley, those who are listening will be looking down into the valley before they can hear him. Now because they went to the mountain top, those who are in the plain or in the valley, to be able to listen to him, you will lift up your eyes and you will look up. And the Lord is saying, you always look up unto him. When he teaches you to mend your life and to mold your life, there is always a necessity of looking up, looking up to the Savior, looking up to the Lord, looking up to the one that moves, looking up to the Messiah, looking up to the mentor. And it is in that process of always looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, that you'll be able to develop the characteristic that is painting for us in this passage. And then we are told, he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. I thought we had that before. Yes, we did. 
read of a particular preacher. He came this particular Sunday and he delivered his message. Then he went back home. He came the following Sunday and he delivered exactly the same message, word for word, reference after reference. They went back home. He came back the third Sunday and he delivered that same message, word for word, verse after verse, chapter after chapter, from beginning introduction to conclusion. They went back home. He came the first Sunday, he delivered the same message, word for word, paragraph after paragraph, until the final sentence, and then they went back home. He came the fifth Sunday, and by this time now, the congregation was feeling inconvenient. Why? It's our pastor delivering the same message. This is the fifth Sunday, and it's not changing anything. It's not changing posture. It's not changing reference. It's not changing the message. And then some of the leaders were getting together, what's happening to our pastor. Then he came the sixth Sunday. And then when he announced his subject, it was still the same subject. And then he began, and he went through everything after that service on the sixth Sunday. Those uh, leaders, supporting pastors, they came to him and said, Pastor, we cannot understand this. Six times now, you have preached the same message, the same topic, the same references, the same sentences, everything the same. Why? Oh, he said, the purpose of giving the message is for you to practice it. It's for you to carry it out. When I came the first Sunday, I preached. When I came the second Sunday, I didn't see any change. And I knew you need this. So, he said it to them again. And I came second week, I didn't see any change. Third week, until now, I've not seen any change. Therefore, I'm going to keep on preaching this. Our students, when they go to school, until they master the particular subject we're teaching, we don't leave there and run off to another scene. Are we not doing like that congregation? The things we have learned. How many times have we repeated now the words of Jesus, blessed are the poor in spirit. Can you say what you have been hearing? Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Has anything changed in your attitude, in your comportment, in your lifestyle, in your honoring the Lord, in your reverencing the Lord? The attitude you have to worship. And the attitude you have to the word of God and the attitude you have to ministry. Has anything changed? That's why we're repeating the words of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are they that mourn. Yes, you heard it before. You have heard it since I started the series. I read it every time. But do you mourn? And I've said over and over that those who do wrong should not become heroes in the kingdom of God. We should not exalt, lift up, appreciate, congratulate those who do evil. When there is sin in the family, when there is spiritual sickness in the family, we mourn. When your children come back home and they bring report sheets back that show that they are at the bottom of the class. You know they are sharp brain. And you know they could do what they ought to do if they wanted to. If they don't do it and they are failures, you mourn. You don't have appetite. You call your children. You don't call them to laugh and to smile. You mourn. In the family of God, when those who have been in the church in Christ for years, 10 years, 15 years, when they became, when they behaved like kindergarten believers, you mourn. And so Jesus said, Blessed are they which mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. Since you have been hearing this, have you prayed? 
that the Lord himself will draw this meekness and gentleness of Christ in your heart, in your comportment, in your lifestyle. Blessed are they, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. At righteousness, this church, are we thirsty at righteousness? Or are we thirsty at activity? You know me, you know when I preach. And you know, do you see why I'm very specific when I preach? You know, sometimes if you throw something and the fellow doesn't know you are throwing it at him, he will not catch it. You know, those people, that, those are young people who are playing football. They have somebody at a goal post. And then when they are kicking the ball, there's somebody there. And that fellow at the goalpost knows that you are sending the ball to him and he's ready to catch it. That's why I do what I do. That when you are there, if I just preach and say, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst at righteousness, for they shall be filled. You think, you, you don't know that you are at the goalpost, that I'm throwing it at you. As your father, I should be able to tell you that blessed are they which thirst and hunger at righteousness, for they shall be filled. And that's, that means then the passion of our heart in this church. Now, your ministry is secondary. The number one thing is follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And so Jesus said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst at a righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is, it is therefore uh, thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Ye are the light of the world. As Savior, Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. John chapter 9. In John chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But now he says to the disciples, to the believers, ye are the light of the world. What Christ is to the world, we are called to be as well. Was this a totally new idea? A totally new concept? No, not at all. Even in the Old Testament, this revelation was clear. God is light. And his people were called to be light. In Psalm 27 verse 1. Psalm 27. I'm reading verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You see that Old Testament? It says the Lord is my light. First John. In First John chapter 1 verse 5. First John chapter 1 verse 5. This then is a message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. 
in Second Samuel chapter twenty one. Second Samuel chapter twenty one, beginning verse seventeen. Second Samuel twenty one, verse seventeen. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, succored him and smote the Philistines and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. David was referred to as the light, the light of Israel. The Philistine wanted to kill him. But then Abishai came and finished that Philistine. Then all the men of David came together and said, You are getting older. You will not go to battle with us anymore because if they kill you, you will quench the light of Israel. You see, we are called to the light in First Kings chapter 11. First Kings chapter 11, verse 36. In First Kings 11, 36. And unto a son will I give one tribe that David, my servant, may have a light always before me in Jerusalem. That's the son of David being referred to as light. Then we come to Romans chapter 2, verse 19. Romans chapter 2, verse 19. And add confidence. That thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. All over the scriptures then, Old Testament and New Testament, each one of us representing Christ is called to shine with his light and influence our world with radiant living. Influence our world with radiant living. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, reflecting Christ's light. Reflecting Christ's light. Number two, radiant Christian living. Radiant Christian living. Number three, renewed consistent life. Renewed Consistent light. Number one, reflecting Christ's light. As we look at the first part of Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. As it says, as the Lord says, ye are the light of the world. What's the, what's the implication of that? He is the light. And we reflect his light. John chapter 1 verse 4. And it was light. And the light was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness.